It's Lawa 86, and we're here in Inner Mongolia, Baotou, uh, industrial city uh, to the west of China. Um, been in China for three years now, been in Baotou for about a year and two months. Uh, today we're on the CB1, a rare bike uh, from Japan, made in 1989 and 1990. Uh, it's got a 400cc engine, uh, similar to a CB400. Uh, a little bit older technology, but actually more power. It's got 55 horse to the wheel. Um, very quick bike. Uh, really fun to ride. This is not my bike, however. I am on a Kawasaki ZRX 1200R. It's being currently repainted due to an unfortunate accident from one of my retarded friends. Not actually retarded. He doesn't have Down syndrome. Well, maybe he does, actually. Because he, he didn't park his bike correctly and didn't turn his wheel. And he turned it like this, and then when I stepped next to it, it fell down and gouged my fuel tank. So that was just fantastic. You can imagine getting a repaint and some new parts for a very expensive Japanese bike in Inner Mongolia is quite a difficult job. Anyway, let's fire this bad boy up. It's high revving beast. Traffic here is a bit crazy. I'll take you on a slow cruise. This is the road I live on, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Why did I come here? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Um, what happened was, I was in America. I just graduated university and was heading into the IT sector uh, for my future career. Good money, good wage. You know what? I hated it. So after I graduated, I decided to make a big change in my life, and I headed out towards China. Started teaching English at a private school. I actually fell in love with teaching. My whole family are teachers, actually. Kind of runs in the blood, I think. And uh, I lived in Guangdong, taught there for a year in the city in a city called Huizhou. A small little place, but full of charm. Wonderful, wonderful city. And uh, yeah. After that, I decided to move to Taiwan. I went to Taiwan for a year, and I taught at HES, which is actually a very prestigious uh, language school. Um, taught there for about a year and three months or so, and then I decided that I really craved coming back to the, the crazy land of mainland China. Uh, so I ended up finding a university position uh, because of my experience in Taiwan. I'm now teaching university at uh, Baotou Teachers College. Um, packed my bags, headed up here. And it's exactly what I thought it would be. It's absolutely nuts. Uh, you never know what to expect. In some ways, it's a nice, developed Chinese city. And in some ways, you realize it's run by gangsters and you could die at any moment. So, that being said, it's been an interesting year or so. Um, and it's been fun on motorcycles. Uh, last year I was riding a Yamaha TTR off-road bike and some of the trail riding I did up in the mountains is fantastic, it's so fun. Uh, but now I'm, I'm trying not to die, so I started to get into road bikes again. However, I noticed that the roads in China are actually probably more dangerous than the mountains, so uh, I don't know if that was the best idea. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a little tidbit for you. In China, mainland China, actually motorcycles are illegal to drive in the city. And uh, there's, there's a, a very strict law against it, but nobody does anything about it. I don't know why. And any bike over 250 cc's is actually illegal as well. Just period. Anywhere in China. Uh, so it's a it's an interesting hobby to get get into because you can't actually legally do it. Uh, Baoto is an interesting place. Pretty poor, but at the same time, uh, there's extreme wealth. For example, this Mercedes G wagon in front of me. This this is a very expensive car here. You pay three times the price you would in the West. Um, Baoto is an interesting place. That was developed by the Soviet Union, uh, and it was handed over to China. 
about 1949. Hold on, let's get a little, let's get a little speed. So the Soviet Union ended up handing the city over to China kind of as a gift after they had developed it. So you don't notice too much of China here uh, other than the people. Uh, although we are in Inner Mongolia, there's not that many Mongolian people in Bauto. It's mostly Han Chinese, but there are quite a few. Um, everything is bilingual. If you look at these signs, uh, you'll see Chinese characters, and if you look carefully, you can also see Mongolian script above everything or next to it. Uh, that's, a, that's a government rule to make everything bilingual. Um, crime, a lot of times people talk about... Oh, I see you over there. CB400. Uh, people talk about crime in China as being very low. Hello. Hello, what's up? Hello. Hey. Um, uh, crime is being very low in China. And that could be true in some places, maybe in Shanghai and Beijing. But I'll tell you what, crime is definitely not low here. Uh, you, you'd you be hard pressed to not see a crime happening on a daily basis, actually. Uh, there's rampant theft, there's violent crime everywhere. Uh, most men are carrying some sort of weapon, knife, sword, anything like that. Um, so yeah, this place keeps you on your toes, I'll tell you that. Up here is a Bauto monument. Pretty much the only information you can find in English about this city is this monument coming up here, these three deer, these prancing deer. We'll head up and have a look at that. Uh, Bauto is split up into three districts. Uh, one of them is called Qingshan, one of them is called Kunchu, and one of them is called Donghe. Donghe is a really old Russian area that was de developed by the Soviet Union. Qingshan and Kunchu are fairly new and fairly wealthy. But it only takes about two minutes outside the city to find villages with no electricity. Uh, so that's a trip, trip and a half. funny thing about this place is that unlike in the south of China where people acquired wealth by making smart business moves here people were sitting on minerals so typically here the rich people are actually the most uneducated they're the people that lucked out by sitting on minerals and it's just ridiculous so sometimes when you see a nice car you should actually watch out because people don't know how to, how to drive it. Vibrations in my hands there, holy crap. Yeah, man! The guy over here is taking a huge leak. He's got a huge stream, look at that, all over that tree. Die, y'all! That looks like my boss's car. Nope, that's not my boss. That would be pretty embarrassing. Yo, what's up, girl? All these flats over here are 
if you go to any small city in uh, Mongolia, outer Mongolia, they, they typically have these squat flats. So, uh, yeah, everything was developed in the vein of Mongolia, but with slight Chinese characteristics. There's a lot of beautiful girls out today, and I don't know where they all went, if they're eating dinner. Yeah, that's what I thought. Old bitch. Uh, police station's here. I always like to go by them with my illegal bike. Going much too fast, usually. Hello, guys. <laughs> There's some nice restaurants down there. Delicious food. Uh, food here is primarily from Shanxi and northern provinces of China. Uh, lots of barbecue and great meat. Uh, but if you want vegetables, you better, better go to a different city because they don't really have them. Um, these are all Russian style. Everything here is Russian style. So it's an interesting place to be architecturally, but I mean, really, like most of the city was kind of, I think, pen and paper, like grid. Like the Soviet Union sat down there, like, you know what? We need a city here. I got a ruler and a pen, and let's make it. Let's make it happen. So most of it's pretty uninteresting, but. Uh, in one of my next videos, I'll take you downtown to, to the nicer parts in Kunshu. Um, just wanted to give you a little synopsis of the area. Come on! I, I'm not going to wait for this stuff, but uh, maybe I will! Whoa, man! Slow your roll. stoplight there. Yeah, so Bauto, I mean, not the ideal place to be, but certainly interesting. I don't think I've ever had a boring weekend here. Students are great. I love my job. I actually live in a Muslim neighborhood. Uh, most of my neighbors are Hoiju, which are the Chinese Muslims uh, from Ningxia province. And they make good food. Cheap, cheap and good food. So sorry. Hey. That is a fellow co-worker. I haven't seen him in actually... Gosh, I don't know how long. This is where I parked the bike. tuned and follow me on some adventures I have. Uh, pretty much every weekend I go somewhere new. Um, and if you have any questions about China, Inner Mongolia, Chinese, Chinese food, Chinese people, stereotypes, sensitive topics, politics, bring it up, send me a comment or a message and I will reply promptly and hopefully at some point in the near future I'll make a video compiling all people's ideas or questions about China in general. Uh, especially if you have any questions about what it's like to live here, a teacher. Um, it could be very helpful, helpful for you. Um, anyway, that's about it. I'll see you guys next time.